Decoder is a combinational circuit that has n number of inputs and to a maximum of m. Encoder is also a combinational circuit which is designed to perform the inverse operation of the decoder. Exactly inverse will be done. One of the difference of multiplexer and encoder and decoder is it uses a selection line along with the inputs line. Hello students, welcome to the next session of the digital electronics. In this session, I'm going to explain you about the advanced uh, digital combinational circuits. Okay, one of the combinational circuit we have already discussed that is the adders and subtractors, isn't it? Now, let's move on to the next thing that is the decoder. What is a decoder? It can be termed as a combinational circuit. Decoder is a combinational circuit that has n number of inputs and to a maximum of m that is 2 to the power of n outputs. There will be inputs represented as m, n and output represented as m. So how many output we get is m equals 2 to the power of n outputs. If you have two inputs, you will get 2 to the power of 2, 4 inputs. If you have 3 inputs, you will get 2 to the power of 3, 8 outputs. Okay. Here we have the decoder. Decoder is identical to another combinational circuit that is demultiplexer. Okay. Multiplexer and demultiplexer are also the combinational circuits which can be used. Okay, here we have the decoder which is identical to a demultiplexer or DMUX without any data input. Okay, we don't have any input, data input, only input connections are there. It performs the operations which are exactly opposite to the stuff, those of an encoder. Okay, it is reverse of the encoder. Diagrammatic representation of the decoder, we have two inputs A1 and A0. This is the earth which uh, takes the electricity to the earth. We have the earth connection and four outputs. For two inputs, we will get four outputs that is Y0, Y1, Y2 and Y3. We have four outputs in a decoder. Here we have the block diagram of the decoder, we have two to four line decoder, two inputs, four outputs. Okay, this is the highest priority input. D1 is the highest priority input and we have D1, D0, D111. So, they are the highest priority inputs. Okay, when we have the ones and zero is the lowest priority input. Okay, the truth table that can be taken for decoder is since it has two inputs, we will get four combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, it is 1, 0 and 1, 1. Okay, 1, 0 and 1, 1 we have. In this, what are the outputs we have? So, D0 if both the inputs are 0, first output will be enabled. Okay, this will be enabled, this will become 1. When you have the combination 0, 1, that is one input in low, another input in high, the output D1 is enabled. Others will be disabled, output D1 will be enabled. Then when you have 1, 0, A as 1 and B as 0, then another D1 is enabled. Then last thing is 1, 1. So, it enables the last D1. So, the last output will be enabled when both the inputs are in the 1 state. Okay. Here we have a 2 to 4 input uh, uh, implementation of the decoder. We have two combinations that is two inputs A and B 
and we have used two NOT gates which represent A dash and B dash. So we'll have the combination of the A and B with an enable input. Okay, E is the enable input. We get Y0 or say D0 equals A dash into B dash. So A dash and B dash. We get A dash B dash. So when you look at the time uh, truth table, when both the values are 0, that is A dash and B dash, D0 will be enabled. Okay. When you have the next one, that is D1 will be enabled when there is A dash B, that is 0, 1. A dash B. Another is Y1, say Y1, Y2, you can take another D1 or D2, you can take. Okay. So here we have D2 as the A, B dash, Y2 or D2. The last output is enabled when both the inputs are in non-complement form. The decoder is decoding. That is from n number of inputs, you are getting 2 to the power of n number of outputs. Okay, if it is 3, the output will be 8. If it is 2, output will be 4. If it is 4 input, output will be 16. 2 to the power of 4, 16 outputs. Okay. In this, we have a 3 to 8 line decoder. We are taking 3 inputs. That means you are going to get 8 outputs. That is 2 to the power of 3, 8 outputs. Here you can see in diagram, there are 3 inputs, x, y, z. Each input has used an NOT gate. So this will become x dash, y dash and z dash. Okay. When you combine this, the first thing is d0. d0 is all in complement uh, form. So this will be x dash, y dash. So you can observe here, it is taking from y dash. And the third thing is z dash, x dash, y dash, z dash. This is the another input. Then we have x dash, y dash, z, x dash, y, z. So each AND gate represents one output. Okay. Whenever there is the switch of the x dash, y dash, z dash, first AND gate will be enabled and that bulb or that light will glow. That output will be enabled. This is usually used in BCD display, okay, where you use the digital devices. In such a case, you can make a use of D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and D7. So this is the representation of 3 cross 8 or 3, 8 line decoder. 3 input and 8 output decoder. Okay. Then we have the encoder. Okay, encoder is exactly reverse of the decoder where encoder is also a combinational circuit which is designed to perform the inverse operation of the decoder. Exactly inverse will be done. Then what happens in the encoder? An encoder has n number of input lines. Okay, and m number of output lines. Okay, if we have... Uh, n and m, 2 to the power of n will be number of inputs and n will be number of outputs or you can take it as n, uh, n number of input lines and m number of output lines. Okay. An encoder usually produces an m bit binary code from octal to binary like from higher uh, 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 representation to the lower representation or from high output inputs to the minimal output we can use the encoder okay then we have the digital input number an encoder usually produces 
an m bit binary code which corresponds to the digital input number okay the encoder usually accepts an n input digital word and converts it into an m bit another digital word that is from one representation to the another representation okay the diagrammatic representation or uh, the state diagram of the encoder will be like this reverse of decoder that means if you have four data inputs d0 d1 d2 d3 you will have only two outputs q0 and q1 okay inputs are d3 d2 d1 and d0 when d0 is enabled or d0 acts as 1 the output will be 0 0 okay when you have d1 enabled input then q1 will be set to 0 and q2 will be set to 1 then when you have the d2 enabled in the encoder the output will be q1 will be set to 1 and q2 to the 0 and when you have the d3 enabled to 1 and d0 also enabled to 1 then you will get both the 1 okay last will be non consider not considered you can omit it or you can include that in the output so one popular encoder we can use in uh, is the octal to binary encoder for converting the octal number to the binary we have octal inputs starting from d1 to d7 or you can take d0 to d7 maximum of 7 you can take data inputs 8 into 3 encoder which uses 3 outputs okay there are 3 data outputs we have the inputs from d0 to d7 okay here we have the outputs y0 y1 and y2 here we have the values when each of the values or each of the input are enabled to 1 the combination of the outputs will change when d0 is 1 all the outputs will be in the 0 state when you have d1 enabled you will have y0 set as 1 output will be 1 when you have 2 or d2 as 1 you will get y1 as high value of y1 will be high okay when you have d3 high value or d3 is set to 1 you will get y0 and y1 enabled to 1 then we have uh, the d3 d4 d5 d6 d7 which each of the next input enabled the combination of y0 y1 and y2 will go on changing okay so this is how you can convert an octal number to binary okay so this is the representation how do you represent this octal to binary encoder is like this we will have d0 or d1 to d7 octal inputs we shall take y2 y1 y0 different combinations if d1 is enabled or d0 is there so d0 will be not shown in the circuit because d0 if set or not set it doesn't makes any difference isn't it the output will be zero only there is no change in the output even if you use if you enable d0 line isn't it so we are omitting the d0 from the state diagram as well as the logical circuit okay here we have d1 to d7 will uh, provide each of with the enabled value when you have d1 is set y0 will be used okay y0 will have the or gate of the d1 plus d3 plus d5 plus d7 
you take this value to enable the y0 like y0 is enabled in these conditions. So you have to check whenever output y0 becomes 1, 1 becomes when d1 is enabled, d3 is enabled, d5 enabled and d7 enabled. So in that, in that case you have to take the 4 inputs. So it has been shown here d1, d3, d5 and d7. When y1 is enabled, y1 is enabled when you have the d2, d3, d4 and d7. That is d2, d3, d6, d7. Let's check in the diagram. So y1 will be one thing from d2 plus d3 plus d6 plus d7. So we have four inputs like this. You can enable each of it. y2 will be enabled when you have y2 is enabled when you have the d3 output input enabled d4 d5 d6 so starting from d3 to d3 to d7 so four inputs will be taken d3 to d7 when you check in the circuit diagram so y2 is d4 d5 d6 d7 so it is d4 plus d5 plus d6 plus d7. So it will enable the y0, y1 and y2 outputs. Okay. Now next is to know about the multiplexer. What is a multiplexer? What is the use of multiplexer? Let's check. Multiplexer is also a combinational circuit that has maximum of 2 to the power of n data inputs and n selection lines and single output line. One of the difference of multiplexer and encoder and decoder is it uses a selection line along with the inputs line. One of these data inputs will be connected to the output each input is connected to the output based on the value of the selection line based on the value set for a selection line multiplexer and demultiplexer are going to be multiplexer are going output will be selected there are since there are n selection lines there will be 2 to the power of n possible combinations of zeros and ones okay so each combination will select only one data input. Okay, you can select only one data input. Multiplexer can also be called as the MUX or the multiplexer. In short, you can call it as a MUX. Okay, only one data input will be selected for each selection line. Okay, here we have a 4 cross 1 multiplexer that has four data inputs, I3, I2, I1 and I0, four selection lines or four data inputs, I0 to I3 and two selection lines, S1 and S0 and one output Y, okay. The block diagram of four cross one multiplexer has been shown here. We have the input I0 to I3 and selection lines S1 and S0 and an output Y. How it is going to implement? We have the selection lines. Say when uh, the selection lines, both the selections uh, lines are off or in the low state, the input I0 will be selected. It is putting, it is sending the data to the output. When you have S1 set to low and uh, S0 set to 1 or high, the input line I1 will be selected. When you have 
the S1 set to 1 and S0 set to 0, the output will be coming from the I2. When both the selection lines are set to high, you get the input from the I3. Okay. From the truth table, we can directly write the Boolean function for the output Y. What is that? Y equals S1 into S1 dash, S2 dash, S1 dash, S0 dash into I0. Next we have S1 plus S1 dash, S0 into I1. Then S1, S0 dash, I2, S1, S0, I3. So all will be using the AND gate. Okay. Here we have the representation of 4 cross 1 multiplexer. Okay. Here we have two selection lines, S1 and S0. We are using the AND gate. So we have function equals S1 dash, S0 dash, I0. Okay. S1 dash, S2 dash, this is the dash. Here we have the S1 dash, S0 dash. So it carries the S1 and S2. So this is S0, S1 dash, S0 dash, I0 will give the I first output from the AND gate. Then we have the S1 dash, S0, I1. This is S1 dash, S0. So it is taken with S0. This is S1 dash, S0, I1. Okay. Then we have the S1, S0 dash coming from the NOT gate and I2. Then we have the S1, S0, I3. All will be applied with an OR gate to get the final output that is Y. Okay. We can use the multiplexer 4 cross 1 multiplexer like this.